Hey guys, it's Vaughn with TAS Performance. Behind me, we have my 2005 LS Swap Toyota 4Runner. Uh, in this video, we're gonna go over some of the process involved in getting that engine to work, uh, as well as some of the parts needed and the preparations that you need to have in place if you want to do a swap like this yourself. Um, if you have any questions on it, feel free to comment on this or message us or comment on one of our pictures on Facebook or Instagram at TAS Performance. But for now, enjoy the video. We got Marco over here working on getting the motor mounts out. Wow, oh, they're really on there. With grace. <laughs> <laughs> they're really on there, needless to say. I'd really weld them. <laughs> what also doesn't help. That you're not using the plasma cutter we have? That the rack and pinions in the way. So we're not using a plasma cutter just because there's a lot of uh, delicate parts, especially on this side with the... Uh, Tons of oil residue and just... Whatnot. Yeah, there's oil residue and we try to clean it best we could, but there's always going to be some... With the steering column and... And plus, we got a BF8. <laughs> and not a lot of room. <laughs> <laughs> not a lot of room, that's also true. You might be able to hit that little piece with the plasma cutter. But the other side is off. Yeah, other, side's, other side's gone, just need some cleaning and prep work. Um, like I said, this side's just that little piece that's holding it on, and then it's ready for prep as well. Only bad part is there's no room in this engine bay. The strut tower sits out a little farther, about a quarter of an inch farther than the frame plate below it. And there's also kind of a, uh, a low point right here in the frame. So what I did, because this needs to be flat, because um, I'm welding that piece of steel to it, what I did was I filled that low spot with weld and then I ground it all down flat so that I can weld on my uh, flat steel and then I can weld my motor mount to it. I have this section of steel. Uh, what I did was I cut it out of this um, railing that we had for a uh, large shelving that was in the shop when we first moved in. Uh, what I'm gonna do with this is I'm actually gonna cut this into two sections and I'm gonna be welding it onto um, the part of the inside of the frame where the motor mounts are gonna weld onto because uh, it's a little uneven. So I'm gonna weld this on, make it all flush and uh, flat so that I can weld onto it. Um, it's also thicker than the uh, frame rail is so it's gonna add a little more support and uh, keep us from puncturing through it Another thing I want to do is show the motor mounts that I'm using. Um, these are universal motor mounts for LS engines um, When I got them they had a Less than desirable weld on them. So I went through and re-welded all of them and made sure that they were to my liking
As for the transmission mount, I actually don't have one up there right now because I don't have the actual transmission mount, but I can actually use the factory subframe and then I'll make a quarter inch plate extension for that so that I can rest the factory mount on top of it. And while my foreigner was decommissioned for a little bit, I decided to go ahead and do a gray interior swap. I had tan cloth interior before and I had a gray leather interior laying around, so I decided to go ahead and swap that out. Um, and if we go up front and cut it on, all the gauges illuminate and the fuel gauge works. It's the only gauge that will work right now, uh, but we do believe that all the rest will work. The radio works, the climate control unit works, and uh, it does still communicate with the rest of the climate control functions as well. And if the climate control unit looks a little different to you, uh, this is actually the reverse polarity kit that John sells on his website. Uh, it's a really cool kit and it's pretty easy to install. Um, <clears throat> what it does is actually on that LCD screen there, uh, where the background is usually amber and the letters and numbers are black. It actually reverses those. So it's a really cool kit and it looks really good, especially with uh, white LEDs everywhere else. So y'all definitely go check out John's Facebook and his website. He's got a lot of cool products up there. This swap's been pretty straightforward. Uh, the only thing, if you do want to do this, I suggest that you have some background in fabrication, welding, cutting, and uh, the access to those materials, it really helps out. Or if you know somebody that does, uh, that's really been the only challenging part about this was engineering and designing and fabricating the mounts and, uh, and everything as far as that. The wiring and stuff isn't that bad and, uh, and it fits great. So as far as manipulating the space you have to work in, there's minimal uh, manipulation, so it's pretty straightforward. All we have to do now is we're going to finish up the wiring, run the fuel lines, and then uh, we're gonna send the forerunner to the drive shaft shop so they can have all that made. Uh, we're looking at about two more weeks until we're done, but it's only been around three weeks that we have in the build so far. Um, I wanna give a huge thanks to John Ionicone and Marco Ferrer for coming and helping me so much with this build. Um, also go check out theirs. Um, John Ionicone has a super clean turbo fourth gen uh, 4.0 forerunner. And uh, it, it's, a, it's a pretty impressive build. So I'll, I'll be leaving uh, information for him and for Marco as well. Uh, John also has a website where he sells um, a lot of aftermarket Toyota parts and upgrades. So definitely go check that out.